stunning and historic set of Halifax Public Gardens, three years to the day <coughs> that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, became the longest reigning monarch in modern Canadian and British history. <coughs> Her Majesty shares a committed, cooperative, and lasting relationship with the peoples of the First Nations of Canada. With the respect that we share of this commitment, we acknowledge that here today we are on unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq Nation. It is my absolute privilege and pleasure to welcome you all to the opening of the Queen Elizabeth II walkway, a lasting tribute to Her Majesty's historic reign, which has lasted more than 66 years. It has been characterized by a rock-solid constancy and an inspiring commitment to all peoples and to duty, service, country, and commonwealth. The walkway surrounds the beautifully restored Victoria Diamond Jubilee Fountain, as well as four stunning beds, which you can, as you can see on the back of your program, each form the letter E in script form. Quite fitting, we thought, and we hope you agree. The walkway was originally an initiative of the Halifax and Southwest Nova Scotia branch of the Monarchist League of Canada and has been a program in planning for three years. With a collaborative approach and with a thanks to the unshakable, absolutely essential support of committed individuals, many of you whom here are here today, and several organizations also represented here today, the walkway is now a reality. More about how it all came about in a few moments. We do have a few speeches to come, followed by an official ribbon cutting to open the walkway. Everyone, thank you for being here. It's my pleasure to say a few words on behalf of Mayor Mike Savage and my colleagues on Regional Council. I'd like to start by acknowledging their honours with Jay LeBlanc and Miss Patsy LeBlanc, in your honour. And uh, Mr. Uh, Fillmore is joining us as well. Good to see you again, Andy. I feel like we're spending a lot of time together these days. Uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II ascended the throne in February 1952 and was crowned a year later on June 2nd, 1953. In 2007, the Queen surpassed her great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria, to become the longest-lived monarch and is the longest reigning British monarch in history. And in the Canadian context, she is the longest reigning sovereign in our modern era. Many of us, including myself, cannot imagine or remember there ever being a different monarch or another monarch. And it's hard to imagine Her Majesty third in line to the throne was unlikely to ever become the queen. Now, it's true confession time for me. I'm a dual citizen. My dad was born in London during the Blitz. I have a British passport. Both my grandmothers were war brides and I grew up in a household where calling a face cloth a flannel and eating steak and kidney pie were normal things that I didn't realize were actually very ethnic specific to my people until much later on in life, well into my 20s. Uh, but the Queen has long held a special place uh, in her heart for Canada and for all of us and has visited her country on many occasions uh, uh, over her reign and has referred to Canada as her second home. And I really believe that it's not just my family, that it's equally true that Canadians and perhaps even more so Nova Scotians are very fond of the Queen, perhaps because so many of us trace our roots back to the United Kingdom. The dedication of this walkway in her name here in Halifax's public gardens in the heart of beautiful District 7 is a much loved public place filled with history and it's only fitting that it happened here. The ceremony could not have happened without the work of the Monarchist League of Canada who worked hard to bring this idea to fruition and continue to promote the education and nonpartisan defense of the Canadian Crown. Thank you all for making this a reality today. And of course, a thank you to the Friends of the Public Gardens for supporting this initiative and defending the public gardens at all times. Uh, I was joking earlier that Judith has my uh, all my numbers on speed dial. Uh, on her 21st birthday, then Princess Elizabeth pledged, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether to be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. Our Queen has been true to her word. So on behalf of the city of Halifax, let us honor the Queen's service and commitment to the country and to the people. To the people. Long may she reign. Thank you very much. On September 9th, 2015, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II surpassed the lengthy reign of her great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria, and became the longest reigning monarch in British and in modern Canadian history. The local branch of the Monarchist League of Canada thus considered that it would be appropriate to acknowledge this historic, historic event in some symbolic way and to pay tribute to the exceptional service that the Queen has given throughout her reign to this municipality in this province, and to Canada generally. The Queen has undertaken 22 official tours to, of Canada, making us her most visited realm. 
She's marked many milestones here, including, but not limited to, Canada's centennial in 1967, the opening of the St. Lawrence Seaway, opening our Parliament, the celebration of the various anniversaries of the entries of several provinces into our Confederation, and the proclamation of the Constitution Act 1982. In 2010, Her Majesty also played a major role here in Halifax in the celebrations marking the 100th, 100th anniversary of our Royal Canadian Navy. On that occasion, she commented, as she has on other visits, that it is good to be home. Her Majesty has, by both word and deed, been a constant presence in the life and evolution of our country for over 65 years. In her role as Queen of Canada, many of us see her as the, as the foundational principle and a living representative that lie at the foundation of our democracy. Throughout her reign, the Queen has also been acutely aware of the cultural diversities of Canadians. She has stated that she sees the Crown as representing not just one or two ancestral strains, but a link between Canadian citizens of every national origin and ancestry. Moreover, she has long had a distinctive bond with our First Nations peoples. She has met on numerous occasions with Indigenous leaders and communities and holds many ceremonial names. When in Halifax in 2010, she met with Mi'kmaq leaders and participated in a major Mi'kmaq celebration. In 1897, many statues, monuments, and other marks of commemoration were erected to mark Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, such as the fountain here behind me. It was thus the belief of our branch that the public gardens would be the ideal venue to situate a recognition to pay tribute to her great-great-granddaughter's reign and her decades of service to our country. The gardens is not only a place of beauty and tranquility, but it's also a showcase for leaders and visitors from around the world, including members of the Queen's own family. In consultation with the Friends of the Public Gardens and representatives from HRN, it was proposed that a walkway to be called the Queen Elizabeth II Walkway would be a fitting and lasting tribute to Her Majesty the Queen. On December 13, 2017, we were delighted to receive notification that our application had been received and approved by Halifax Regional Council. It's an understatement to say that we were further over the moon when we received a letter dated May the 24th, 2018, from the Assistant Private Secretary to the Queen to say that Her Majesty would be pleased and delighted with both the walkway and the proposed name. And I'm almost out of time. So all that remains for me to say is this. Thank you to everyone who was present and to those who couldn't be here with us today, who have supported and encouraged this initiative throughout its various stages. I thank you all for coming and for joining with us this morning. And I encourage you to enjoy yourselves. Thank you very much. Your Honours, Deputy Mayor, Member of Parliament, and distinguished guests, Good morning. And on behalf of the Friends of the Public Gardens, welcome to Halifax's greatest natural and national treasure and most visited site in HRM, a timeless oasis in an ever-changing world. The Friends of the Public Gardens were pleased to work alongside the Monarchist League Halifax Southwest Nova Scotia branch by supporting the naming of the Queen Elizabeth II walkway. Board Director Karen Gunther of the Friends was quick to see the significance of this quadrant of the gardens and suggested the location encompassing the Jubilee Fountain commemorating in 1897 Queen Elizabeth's great-great-grandmother Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. Unveiled by the Countess of Aberdeen, wife of the Governor General Earl John Campbell Gordon during Jubilee Week, it is one of the most enduring and iconic, iconic artifacts within the gardens. In 2012, the fountain was restored to full working order in its original color scheme to mark the Diamond Jubilee of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Contained within this area and following the new walkway, 
are several examples of Victorian garden-esque and the four scroll-shaped beds shaped in the knee for the reigning monarch and the serpentine beds providing a profusion of color through the artistry of our gardeners. The walkway is a path between the Grand Allee, wide enough actually for two ladies to walk side by side with their hoop skirts, and, and, and the path along Sackville Street. As you approach the epicenter, the fountain from each side, you pass the splendid azalea beds. The Victorian gardens were all about symmetry, and there is such great harmony and symmetry here with Queen Elizabeth II and her great-great-grandmother. It is most appropriate location in the gardens and remarkably fitting. The majestic, majestic trees here have nurtured and sheltered this area, and many are original. The Victorians were all about education and introduced many new species to, the, to Nova Scotia, ones we would never think would grow here, and yet they have and flourished. For an example, the European beach that is right there, the Chinese couture tree behind me, that soon, as it prepares for winter, will brace the air with a very sweet candy cane aroma, the Japanese lilac on the other side of the fountain, the European lindens, and the Liberian golden chain tree, the non-native apple service berry, and the Korean corkscrew willow. They will continue now in new glory, with the new glory of the, of the Queen Elizabeth II walkway for all of you to enjoy forevermore. Thank you. Former Lieutenant Governor Francis, and thank you for her member of Parliament Fillmore. Thank you to Mayor Mason, we had members of the Friends of the Public Gardens, Mr. Chris Spidell, and members of the Anarchist League of Halifax and Southwest. Now, the Scotia branch, and ladies and gentlemen, and good morning. As the Queen's representative in Nova Scotia, it is indeed an honor and a privilege for me to participate in the ceremony to name a walkway in honor of Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II in the historic and Halifax of public gardens. En tant que représentant de la Reine à Nouvelle-Écosse, c'est avec plaisir. Je ne pense pas de cette cérémonie pour nommer un abri de magnifique et historique jardin public par les forces. En honneur de Sa Majesté la Reine Elizabeth II. The Queen has lived for almost two thirds of Canada's very existence. And she has been the Queen of Canada for nearly 45% of those years. She has toured, as indicated earlier, Canada over 22 times, more than any other member of the Commonwealth country. Uh, to say that she has a special relationship with Canada would be indeed an understatement. She also has a keen appreciation and understanding of Canada and Canadians. In, in Queen Elizabeth, we have no greater example of duty and service to others. As the Queen marked the 65th anniversary of her coronation in June of this year, we took the opportunity to reflect on her service to her people. Throughout her adult life and as Queen, she has indeed flawlessly and tirelessly worked to uphold the role and duties and to serve the people of her realm. This was a pledge she made when uh, she was a princess back in South Africa, when she was only 21 years of age. And she has not wavered uh, from that pledge ever since. Everyone, regardless of your views, can all, we can all learn much from the dedication <coughs> and service that she has provided uh, to Canada and to the Commonwealth. Their wonderful example has served to uphold the prestige and importance of the crown in our constitutional monarchy. We are indeed truly blessed that she is our queen. I want, uh, of course, to thank the Halifax Regional Municipality for approving the renaming of the walkway. 
I also wish to thank and recognize the friends of the gardens. Now, their work and their organization does a very important for preserving and showcasing the oldest and finest example of a Victorian garden in North America. Finally, I wish to congratulate the members of the Halifax and Southwest branch of the Monarchies League for bringing this walkway, walkway naming to fruition. I know that this project has been long in the making. I also wish to, to offer my sincere thanks for their tireless work that the League does to educate and promote what a constitutional monarchy means to Canadians. I want to tell me, je tiens à remercier le personnel et les bénévoles qui ont organisé la cérémonie d'aujourd'hui et qui ont assuré le succès. Je suis gré de votre application et de votre engagement. To conclude, I want to thank the staff and the volunteers for organizing today's ceremony. Your hard work has made today's event a great success. Your commitment and dedication is indeed greatly appreciated. Merci. Thank you and Gloria. Thank you, Your Honor. It is now time to officially open the Queen Elizabeth II walkway. Your Honours, Mr. Spidel and Mr. Yogis, Ms. Cabrita and Ms. Gunther, and Deputy Mayor Mason, please make your way over to the arch where the ribbon is, and we will set you up for the ribbon cutting. And once the dignitaries are in place, I would invite you guests too to please come over to get a closer view of the cutting. Okay, Your Honor, anytime. Don is running the scissors. <laughs> <laughs> He's eager. He's ready. <laughs> oh, yes, sir, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut it. Anytime. You can cut your you own. You can cut it, I'm sorry. Okay, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are almost finished the formal part of our ceremony, but at this time I would like to invite the acting chief, Plan LeBlanc, to propose a Celtic blessing on the Queen Elizabeth II walkway. Bonjour. Um, I would like to pay a Vidane to give you a blessing in Gaelic. This is given on behalf. This is given on behalf of the High Chief of Clan Lamont, Father Peter Moore Lamont, who has asked me to represent him here today. Father Lamont uh, resides in Australia and uh, currently represents him on the Standing Council of Scottish Chiefs. Arnar, a haranier, Ludicur Danem, Hickech Doriach, Genar da Hol, Arantalev, Maralier, Anier, Taverdwin and Du Arnar and Lyel, I guess my Dwin are Fiachan, a Villa Vias Shin are Lufia, I guess Nalechan and Burak Shin, Aksur Shin are Ol, or is Latsa and Riach, I guess Nakubach. Thank you very much for all attending. And please, also today before you leave the gardens, walk the walkway. Enjoy it. It is here for you and all others who visit this beautiful site to enjoy. Thank you.